How many of you have ever heard of the universal law of attraction? How many of you believe in the universal law of attraction? Because if you don't, you're about to. Because for 22 years, I never believed in any of that spiritual mumbo jumbo. Until one day, I found a law in the physical universe. It's a law in physics. You might want to write this down. It's called constructive interference. And it says that when two wavelengths of equal length meet, the size of the frequency doubles. This is the law of attraction, backed by the science of constructive interference. At its core, it's a wave phenomenon. When two or more waves meet and are in phase, meaning they sync up perfectly, they combine to form a wave of even greater amplitude. Think of two perfectly timed ripples in a pond. When they intersect, they create a larger combined ripple. But what does this have to do with the LOA? Everything. Consider this, your thoughts, emotions, and intentions can be thought of as waves, each with its own frequency. When these frequencies are in harmony, their combined power is magnified. This is precisely how tuning forks work. Strike one, and another with the same frequency will begin to vibrate in response. Your thoughts and desires can be tuned into actual frequencies, causing the universe to respond in kind. But what this means is that you can get energy from conversation. You can get energy from what I'm telling you right now. You can get energy from the people around you, or they can take energy away from you. So as I went down this spiritual rabbit hole, I said, well, where does this frequency come from? It comes from the brain. It comes from an area of the brain called the gray matter. This groundbreaking knowledge has been present in our scientific archives for a while, but has been overshadowed by louder voices in the scientific community. One might wonder why something so transformative hasn't gained more traction. Perhaps, as with many discoveries that challenge our conventional paradigms, it's because they're disruptive to established ways of thinking. Knowing this, how can one harness the power of constructive interference in their own life? By ensuring that your thoughts, intentions, and emotions are aligned. When they are in sync, they become a potent force, drawing to you what you desire with increased intensity. It's as if the universe operates on the same principles as the science of waves. When you're in tune with what you desire, when your frequencies are aligned, the universe can't help but respond. It's not magic, it's science. The science behind constructive interference and the LOA isn't a contemporary revelation. It has, in fact, been echoed across ancient scriptures, each reflecting this truth through its unique perspective. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. Matthew 18.20 Rather than simply suggesting the mere physical gathering of individuals, this verse from the Bible emphasizes the magnified power stemming from collective intentionality. It's not just about being together, it's about the amplified force that arises when aligned intentions intersect, a direct nod to the principle of constructive interference. As we delve deeper, it becomes evident that numerous age-old proverbs and teachings mirror this scientific concept. Could it be that these ancient writings were indirectly referring to constructive interference in the context of our thoughts and intentions? Consider the sacred texts from diverse traditions, the Upanishads from India, the Yi Jing from China, and the Tao Te Ching. Each of these venerable scriptures contain insights and verses that emphasize harmony, alignment, and amplification of energies. The terms they employ and the stories they narrate might well be their unique way of describing what today's scientists term as constructive interference. In essence, the alignment of thought waves, the synchronization of intentions, and the potent magnification that results from their convergence might not be modern-day revelation, but an age-old wisdom waiting to be reinterpreted and rediscovered in the light of contemporary science. Take a moment and pick up your phone. No matter its brand or model, one underlying principle allows it to function. Connectivity through frequencies. But as you're about to discover, these frequencies aren't just for texting or streaming a video. They're an emblematic allegory for the untapped potential that exists within us, akin to the mysteries of the universe itself. Mobile phones function using electromagnetic waves, a spectrum of frequencies that allow for communication across vast distances. 
A call or message sets off a chain of events that converts your voice or text into digital signals. These signals, with the help of a specific frequency, are transmitted across the airwaves until they reach the intended receiver and are then converted back into voice or text. But it's not just about the conversion, it's about the seamless dance of frequencies that make this process near miraculous. Now, dive a little deeper. Let's think about what these frequencies signify. They represent the invisible thread of connection, which, while not seen, is undoubtedly felt and experienced. Just as your phone sends and receives these invisible waves, your thoughts and intentions send out their own frequencies into the universe. We seem to have a basic understanding of this. I think what I'm saying here, everyone in the room understands this when we're using our phones. However, when it comes to life, we get lost. We don't seem to understand it. Well, let's try and understand it. Let these lines represent levels of vibration. Every vibration is referred to as a frequency. We operate on frequency. My, my voice is being amplified on a particular frequency. You and I think on frequencies. Thought is energy. Do you know your thoughts are the most potent form of energy there is? Your thought would make the laser beam look like a toy. Thought waves are cosmic waves that penetrate all time and space. Now, let's suppose this is the frequency that you're thinking on. If that's the frequency you're thinking on, that's going to dictate the results that you get. The results you get are nothing but the manifestation of your own thinking. We become what we think about. That is the one point that every great leader has agreed on. They've disagreed in virtually every other idea, but that one, we become what we think about. Now, let's clearly understand nothing is created or destroyed. All science and all theology teach that. Nothing is created or destroyed. All the power there ever was or ever will be is omnipresent. All the ideas, it's all the knowledge there ever was or ever will be is omnipresent. It's all here. We didn't have to get it. We've already got it. What we do is got to do is tune into it. So let's say that's where we want to go. This is where I am. That's where I want to go. How do I get there? Well, I'll say, I'm going to do that. This is where the average person's thinking. I'm going to do that as soon as I get the money. You can relate to that. I'm going to do that as soon as the kids are out of school. That's not going to do it. We're thinking down here on this frequency. Your mind and your thoughts are down here on this frequency. What you want is up here on a higher frequency. You cannot get what you want up there while your thoughts are down here. Your mind and thoughts must focus on the same frequency as what you want. If you want it, it's already here. And you make a decision. It's got to be a committed decision. You say, I'm doing that. Now, the second you make a committed decision, everything starts to change. You begin to think and act like the person you want to become. You stop thinking down there. You're thinking up here now. You're thinking on a higher frequency. Want is the only prerequisite for making a decision. Doesn't matter whether you have the money. Do you really want it? As science and technology have evolved, so too has our understanding of the power of frequencies. Renowned researchers like Dr. Karen L. Fielding have proposed that human thoughts can be akin to electromagnetic frequencies. In her groundbreaking study, Fielding showcased how focused intent resonates at specific frequencies, akin to how a tuned radio accesses a particular station. And just as tuning to the right station is pivotal for clear reception, aligning our thoughts with positive intent is paramount for manifesting our desires. Imagine this, every thought, every intention, and every aspiration you have is like dialing a number on your phone. When dialed right, you connect to the universe, and when the connection is strong, the universe listens, understands, and responds. A vast body of research now converges on this pivotal point. The universe isn't just a passive backdrop, it's an active participant, a grand web of connections, all responding to the frequencies we emit especially when those frequencies are focused and intent driven. This is such powerful information. You'd think it would be taught in all schools. The truth is it's not. It's rather sad because it can be, but it's not. That's why you're created in God's image. We've got to understand what's that mean we're created in God's image. We can do anything. We've got the faculties to do the job. Most of us are going by what we hear, see, smell, taste, touch. I got dogs at home that can see or see, smell, taste, touch. That just puts you in touch with your outside world. But your lessons come from your inside world, not outside, inside. 
And you have to use your higher faculties, perception, the will, reason, imagination, memory, intuition. The implication of this colossal, just as you're empowered to communicate globally through your phone, you're endowed with the ability to connect and manifest on a cosmic level. And if this knowledge is so pivotal, why isn't everyone talking about it? The truth is, these findings, though revolutionary, often lie buried beneath heaps of more conventional research, perhaps because they challenge established paradigms, or maybe, just maybe, because this knowledge hands over too much power to the individual. Consider this, if everyone understood and harnessed this power, the collective frequency of our planet would be one of immense positivity, growth, and mutual intent. It would mean a world where our collective aspirations harmoniously resonate, bringing forth an era of unbridled potential. While the connectivity of our mobile phones is a technological marvel, the connectivity of our intentions and the universe's responsiveness is nothing short of magic. And it's not just magic, it's science. Remember this, in a world of visible tools and invisible connections, your focused intentions are the most powerful tools you possess. Another undeniable testament to the power of the law of attraction is found deep within quantum research. An experiment, familiar to those well-versed in the intricacies of this field, stands as a lighthouse, revealing the profound interlinking of consciousness and the tangible realm. Led by Dr. Vladimir Paponin, this groundbreaking study, christened the DNA Phantom Effect, presents insights so profound that they not only resonate with the principles of the law of attraction, but also challenge the very bedrock of our scientific comprehension. Dr. Paponin, a quantum biologist, ventured into an experiment that would perplex even the most seasoned of quantum physicists. He started with a simple setup a vacuum chamber devoid of all particles. Within this chamber, he introduced photons, the smallest particles of light. Without interference, these photons should be distributed randomly. Yet, when he placed a sample of human DNA inside the chamber, something astounding occurred. The photons arranged themselves in alignment with the DNA. But the revelations didn't end there. Once the DNA was removed from the chamber, Logic would dictate that these photons would revert to their random distribution. However, they did not. The photons maintained their pattern, as if the DNA was still present. The DNA had left an indelible imprint on the arrangement of the photons, a phantom of its presence. Now, let's ponder on this. What does it imply? For starters, it shatters the linear understanding of cause and effect. It suggests that living DNA communicates with the world in ways more intricate than we'd ever imagined. If the mere presence of DNA can influence the behavior of light, imagine the depth of the universe's response to focused human intention and thought. This doesn't merely hint at the power of consciousness, it screams of its dominion over matter. Our DNA isn't just the blueprint of our physical being, it's an active participant in the universe, constantly interacting and molding the fabric of reality. Think of this in terms of the law of attraction. Our intentions and thoughts, like the DNA, shape the universe around us. This is not wishful thinking. It's a scientific observation, grounded in experimental data. Why, then, has such a groundbreaking experiment not splashed across the headlines? Why is it tucked away, obscured from public discourse? Could it be that the ramifications of this discovery are too potent, too transformative for the world as we know it? Acknowledging the DNA phantom effect is acknowledging the tangible power of intentionality. It would mean rethinking our role in the universe, not as passive observers, but as active creators. It's no surprise that such findings, despite their revolutionary nature, remain on the fringes, spoken of in hushed tones among alternative science communities. They challenge long-held beliefs and threatened established systems of control. The implications of the DNA phantom effect are not just scientific, but societal. But, just like the photons that retain the memory of the DNA, the truth of our interconnectedness and our power to shape reality persists, waiting for the collective consciousness to recognize and harness it. And once we do, there's no turning back. 
our understanding of potential, of our place in the universe, will be forever altered. Advertising. It's everywhere you look, influencing our choices, shaping our desires, and crafting our worldviews. But there's a level to advertising that few are aware of, a dimension that dives deep into the very mechanics of the human psyche. This isn't just about selling products, it's about influencing collective consciousness. The most potent advertisements are no random creations, they're meticulously designed to tap into the human subconscious, leveraging the very principles of the law of attraction that we've been exploring. By consistently embedding specific images, words, and ideas into our minds, advertisers are effectively utilizing a form of mass-scale intention setting. Think back to the famous experiments by Dr. Masaru Emoto, where he demonstrated how thoughts and words could change the structure of water crystals. Now, imagine millions of minds simultaneously being exposed to the same message, the same intent. This works, and it shapes the fabric of our society. Take, for instance, the rise of smartphone culture. Before their universal adoption, advertisements painted a world where connectivity was not just desired, but essential. They tapped into our innate desire to belong, subtly implanting the idea that without constant connection, we were missing out. Today, the majority of the population is tethered to these devices, a testament to the power of focused, collective intention made manifest. Here's another revelation. Many leading advertising agencies employ cognitive psychologists and neuroscientists. Why? Because they understand the significance of brainwave frequencies. Different emotional states, happiness, sadness, desire, fear, each have unique frequencies. Advertisers craft messages that resonate with these frequencies, ensuring that the viewer is in the exact emotional state they intend. This isn't mere persuasion, it's neurological synchronization. Research from the Neural Advertising Association has shown that ads utilizing these advanced techniques can increase purchase intent by over 300%. They don't merely convince, they align your frequency with the product or idea they're promoting. It's a game of resonance, of aligning the thoughts and frequencies of the masses with specific intentions. And once this alignment is achieved, the law of attraction takes over. Our collective reality begins to shift in the direction of these implanted desires. But this knowledge need not be a cause for alarm or despair. Instead, it's an invitation. An invitation to become conscious participants in the shaping of our collective reality. By understanding the tactics employed, by recognizing the game being played, we can choose where to direct our focus. We can reclaim the immense power of our collective intention and shape a world in alignment with our truest desires. In this age where technology connects us in ways previously unimaginable, we're gifted an unparalleled opportunity to unite our intentions and thought frequencies. As we've explored, individual intention has power, but the combined force of collective intention it's a force beyond reckoning, echoing the principles of constructive interference on a universal scale. War, conflict, and global uncertainty paint the current canvas of our world. Yet, amidst this chaos, we hold an intrinsic power, a collective strength derived from our interconnected thoughts and intentions. As we have seen, the universe responds, amplifies, and echoes our innermost desires and intentions. The power of a single person's intention is undeniable, but when billions of hearts and minds unite with a shared vision, the universe can't help but respond in kind. It's not merely about hoping for peace, it's about collectively visualizing, intending, and resonating with it. If every individual chose, even for a brief moment, to focus their intentions on healing the wounds of war, on visualizing a world of unity and prosperity, the resulting wave of collective constructive interference would be overwhelming. Amidst the tragedies of war and the pain of loss, let us not forget the victims. Let us direct our collective intentions towards them, providing solace, strength, and hope. Through our united focus, let's envelop them in a blanket of positive energy and healing vibrations, intending for their swift recovery and peace. Moreover, let's not just pray or hope. Let's use our understanding of constructive interference, of the tangible power of collective intention to imagine a world of unity, peace, and prosperity. 
Every moment we spend resonating with this vision amplifies its power, nudging our reality ever so slightly towards this imagined paradise. Remember, every major change in history started as a mere thought in someone's mind. If such monumental shifts can result from individual thoughts, envision the potential when we all think as one, feel as one, and intend as one. In times like these, when uncertainty and despair loom large, let's remind ourselves of our innate power and the science behind it. Let's not allow despair to overshadow hope. By understanding our individual and collective power and harnessing it, we can pave the way for a brighter, harmonious future. In conclusion, let us be the constructive interference the world needs. Alone, we're powerful. Together, we're unstoppable. The time has come for us to unite our intentions and craft a world of love, peace, and shared aspirations. Let's imagine, and consequently manifest, a better world. For in the beautiful dance of our collective intentions, the universe is our willing partner, waiting to transform our visions into reality.